Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Rajat and today we will be discussing the question Beautiful Arrangement Part 2. In this question, we are given two integers and and k and we need to construct a list which contains n different positive integers ranging from 1 to n and obeys the following requirement. If there are multiple answers, we need to return any one of them. In the first example, n is equals to 3 and k is equals to 1 and the output is 1, 2, 3. As this output has only one distinct integers, that means absolute difference between 1 minus 2 and 2 minus 3 is equals to 1. In the second example, n is 3 and k is 2. And in this case, the output is 1, 3, 2. It is because the absolute difference between 1 and 3 is 2 and between 3 minus 2 is 1. So we have two exactly distinct integers. Now, the given constraint states that the value of n and k lies between 1 to 10 raised to power 4 and k should always be less than n. Now, we'll first see what this problem is about and how with each value of k the result changes. So, suppose n is equals to 9 and k is not known to us. We will be seeing for every k how the output changes with respect to the same n. The value of k can lie between 1 to 8 and we will discuss in the later part of the video how the value of k when equals to n changes the result. So, we will start off with k is equals to 1. So, we will first write all those 1 to n that is 1 to 9 in this case in a increasing sequence. When we see this array and apply the logic wherein we find the absolute difference with the previous number in the array, we find that all the number give an absolute difference of 1, thus making one distinct integer that is present in the resultant list. So this list is the answer when k is 1. So we can have one more variation of it. We can also write down this list in this decreasing fashion and also the answer still remains the same. So both of these values can be the answer to this particular problem when n is 9 and k is 1. So we'll put this value into our sequence table against k equals to 1. And now we will see when k is equals to 2. We have this sequence with us which is the result of k equals to 1. And we are sure of one thing that all those values present between this square bracket gives us only one distinct absolute difference. Even if we reverse this subarray, we'll still have only one distinct integers returned for this subarray. But we have increased the number of total distinct integers by swapping this value as now the difference between 1 and 9 is 8 and all rest of the array it is 1. So we have two distinct integers present in this array. So we'll put this value into our sequence and now we move to k equals to 3. We again see that all the values from 8 till the end of the array gives us only one distinct value. So we can again swap this particular subarray thereby increasing the number of distinct integers in this array by 1. Because now the difference between 1 and 9 is 8, 2 and 9 is 7 and all the other values after this 2 will give us the same absolute difference that is 1. So here we have 3 distinct differences from this array. So we put this value also into our sequence table. And similarly, we can proceed further with k equals to 4 till k equals to 8. When we do that till k equals to 8, we see that there is a pattern in this particular problem. With the increase of every k, we are just swapping the remaining array and increasing the number of distinct integers in the resultant array. We have put down a question mark at k equals to 9 because we will see that by running it directly on lead code and see what the expected output is. Now let's focus our attention on k equals to 5. When k is equals to 5, we see that we have a low value that is 1, then we have the highest value that is 9. Now we again alternate between these two values and then at the end we have a sequence either in increasing or decreasing fashion. 
which gives us the same number of distinct value that is 1. So we need to loop on this array alternating between the high and a low value and then when the k is equals to 1 we just put down the values either in increasing fashion or in decreasing fashion according to the previous value in the sequence and that will give us the result. We will do just that what we have discussed over here. So it's time to code this particular approach. So we'll need a resultant array. So we'll define that first, which will be of size n. Now we know that we need to have two values. First is high, which is n and second is low, which is equals to one. Now we need to have an index where we will be putting on the values. Now, as we know that we are always putting one at the start of the array. So we will do just that at the very start. We are doing index plus plus and we are putting low plus plus. Now we need to loop till the value of k is greater than one because we know that once we have k equals to one, we just need to put the values in increasing or decreasing fashion. Now, in order to understand this problem better, we will take one example. We will be taking n is equals to five and k is equals to three and we will show how each step we are putting down the values. So suppose the value of n is uh, 5 now. So we have started with 1. Now the low value is 2 over here and the index is 1. So we need to put in value 5 at this particular index that we are now. So at this particular index, we will put the value which is the value at high. And now we need to decrement this high also we are incrementing the index also and as we have created one distinct value we will decrement the k. Now we need to put in a low value next to this high value. In order to put this low value if this k was initially 2 it becomes 1 here so we should not put a low value but if the k is still greater than 1 we should put the low value. So we will put at index incrementing it putting the low value, also incrementing the low value and then decrementing the k. So by this we will bring down the k to 1 and now when k is equals to 1, we just need to put the values either in increasing or decreasing fashion. Now we need to put the values in increasing and decreasing fashion according to the last value that is present. So in this case, the last value is 2. So we need to put the values in increasing fashion. How would we know that we need to put the value in increasing fashion or not? We need to toward this last value that we have put in. So in order to know that we can have a boolean flag which says is high which will initially be false as initially we have put in 1. So the last value is not a high value. So we have put in false. Now the last value we are, that we have put in over here is a high value. So we will make this is high flag as true over here and here we are putting a low value. So we'll make this flag as false. So here as we need to loop till the index is less than n. If the is high is true, we need to put in the high value, which means putting result at this index plus plus high decrementing the high value else we need to put in the low value. So we will just put result low plus plus. At the end we will be simply returning this result array. So once we reach this 2, we are at this low value. The high is false. Now we need to put in all the values. So we will iterate over this. The index will increment and the result we will be putting all the low values incrementing it. So this makes the sequence as 1, 5, 2, 3, 4, which has three distinct values. Now let's try to run this code. So it ran successfully. Let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. The time complexity is O of n and the space complexity is also O of n. Now the one thing that we discussed at the start is what happens when the value of n and k are both equal that is 9 and 9. When we run this code, the result should be an invalid test case because that is not the constraint given. We cannot have n and k. Somehow lead code missed that and the expected output in this case included 10 which was not expected and is not mentioned in the question. 
I hope you like this video. Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.